Welcome back to The Nation and welcome again to Colin James, our political commentator in Wellington. Uh, Colin, what do you make of what Winston Peters said earlier on this programme with regards to the Henry Inquiry and the leak by Peter Dunn? Where does it go from here? Well, there's a couple of things there. One is that uh, Winston Peters uh, was playing the statesman. Uh, these are states matters. He wasn't going to the personal stuff that might be lurking in there at all. Uh, and I think that's Winston Peters positioning himself uh, with the public as a senior person in New Zealand politics, and, and he is, actually, in, in some ways. Uh, and also uh, there's the issue of whether John Key will have to deal with him uh, post the next election uh, and maybe bring him, bring him into the government. So uh, John Key would have to... <laughs> Uh, swallow quite a lot of what he said back in 2008 in order to do that, but he's been edging back that way. So Winston Peters playing both those two games, I think. Mm. Uh, uh, serious games, I don't mean by that he was just being uh, flippant. Uh, Is and the, Winston and the other Peters point, the big winner here, Colin? Oh, no, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, he's the guy who got this, uh, uh, who raised it first uh, in two of the uh, um, select committee hearings uh, and got it onto the, uh, into the news media. Yes, he's the guy who, who ran with this and the Labour Party didn't. The Labour Party's playing catch-up. And they're playing catch-up on the same ground pretty much now. Uh, Labour Party trying to pin it back to John Key. Does he actually handle these things well? Uh, and is he attentive enough? That uh, phrase that uh, 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 Grant Robertson used of willful blindness. Uh, does he pay close enough attention to matters of state? I think they were pretty much on the same page, those two, although differently played. And where do you think it goes from here? What are we going to see, do you think, in the next week or so? In the next week or so? Uh, well, I think, it, I don't know about the next week or so, but I think at some point those emails are likely to emerge. They may add to jo uh, Peter Dunn's embarrassment. Uh, and let's see whether he lasts the 17 months through to the election. OK, we've just spoken with uh, Judith Collins. What do you make of what she had to say and, and potentially whether she is the next leader of the National Party? Uh, well, uh, Judith Collins is a mixture. You saw on, in that interview her being both the hard uh, politician... I was going to say hard man, actually. I mustn't say that. Uh, <laughs> But that You'd be a brave uncompromising man if you did, person, Mr. James. <laughs> <laughs> that uncom uncompromising person, no compromise over David Bain, uh, no give on electoral reform, uh, no give on uh, international uh, prince prison transfers. You see that tough uh, woman, the Thatcher type woman. I once described her as having sharp teeth, which I think she found amusing. But you also saw the other side, and that's that. But that person is not the sort of uniting figure that would naturally be. A leader, but you also see that other side. Uh, she can, she's quite human and quite likable and quite funny, uh, and that's another dimension. Is she on the right or the left? Uh, uh, by the way, I wasn't talking about factions. I was talking about tendencies or temperaments, uh, and I don't think she does fit in all four. She leans a bit towards the rightish side of the cabinet, but uh, not in that sort of hard Thatcherite way. All right, Colin James, thank you for your analysis you. this morning.